All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So I did it. Today was the day. And I decided uh, I wanted to focus all my attention on my 180 gallon SPS reef here. So with that came a few challenges. One, I had to get rid of all my LPS corals that I had in that nano reef. Uh, this has a copper band butterfly and I do plan on adding a few more angelfish. So any LPS coral was, was not gonna work out. So I uh, went ahead and reached out to a local reefer and uh, he came over and he had the pick of the litter of, of everything I had in my tank. And uh, he picked a few nice corals in trade for a couple of SPS frags. So I took the rest of the corals this morning over to my LFS. Uh, that is Jamrock Corals, and you can visit them at jamrockcorals.com. And uh, I was like, hey, I just broke down my reef. What, uh, can we work something out? So uh, you look through all my frags, and uh, a lot of them had multiple heads because they've been growing with me for over a year now. And I uh, actually had a nice colony of frog spawn and a blasto that went one head when I got it, and it was up to 10 heads. And uh, a Duncan was, you know, one head when I got it over a year ago. It had, I think, eight heads when I counted it. You know, multiple head hammers, that kind of stuff. So uh, then I went in and I picked out some frags. And I ended up getting a Garf Bonsai. I've been wanting one of those for a while. Another no-name Acropora. And a couple of uh, Montiporas as well. Um, you know, we are keeping this reef 100% SPS. So that went fine and we came home and you know, got them all mounted up and, and, and dipped and, and, put it into, and put into the tank, no problem. So then I went back into the office and I was like, all right, it's time to move the livestock over from the small tank to the big tank. With one big, with one big problem, uh, clownfish. Is, uh, two pairs of clownfish in one tank is usually uh, unheard of, a no-no in this industry. So I went and I got my, my, started taking all the rock out and started getting all the snails and hermit crabs and I had one emerald crab, got that off the rock. And uh, as I brought the rock out, it made it easier for me to catch the fish. I had three fish in there and a peppermint shrimp who has become basically like a cleaner shrimp. He, uh, he, he does like a cleaner shrimp does and he'd go up on my finger and clean off my finger when I put my hand in the tank. So as I scooped up the, Peppermint shrimp, the lawnmower blunny, boop, right into the net. Okay, that makes it easy for me. Then I went and got my clownfish, and uh, both of them swam right into the net. All right, that makes it easy. And I was able to kind of get all the livestock into to one little pail. So then I said, okay, it's now or never. Let's, uh, I got six foot of tank here. And I figured the clownfish can have all of this side of the tank to go in, and the current frostbite clownfish that are in this system live on this side of the tank here. So I let the snails and the, the shrimp in first, and then I let the bucket go with the, the clownfish. And what do you know it, the, the frostbites that are currently in the tank came right up to greet the new Ocellaris clownfish. And both of these mated pairs are I've had in my position for over a year. So they're both paired up with each other. The Ocellaris are paired up with each other and the Frostbite are paired up with each other. And, and there's clearly a male and clearly a female. So going against all rules, I added another set of clownfish in here and I figured let's see how it goes. And if I have to come up with a plan B later on, I'll come up with the plan B later on. And sure enough, the Ocellaris came right up to greet the, the, the Frostbite and they were within contact of each other within 10 seconds of being in the water. And the new set of clownfish for this tank went right over to the territory that the frostbites have already claimed for themselves. So, of course, there was some bickering and dominance displays and all that. And um, let's actually go and take a look and see what they're doing right now.
Okay, here are the frostbites in question. And look at, there are the other two, the oscillaires from my cube. Both absolutely beautiful pairs. And um, they don't seem to be fighting now, but you think in a tank this size that they would, uh, oh, there they do go. You think in a tank this size they would just go and take refuge on the left side of the reef. And they have explored over there, and they end up coming straight back. And I'm not 100% sure why. But while we're looking at it, we'll go over some of the new corals we got. There's one of the plating Montipores right there. And then there's this guy here my daughter actually picked out. I told her, pick one out, and that one will be yours. So this is a Montipore as well. And apparently this one, depending on the light, will actually grow up shoots as well as in crust. And the two Acropora I got put right over here. That's the Garf Bonsai, which is has a purple body with yellow to yellow green polyps. Not sure what this guy is, and he's really not fully opened yet. I just know he was very, very fuzzy and had very nice color when we were in the store. There we go. Got some good focus there. All right, guys, there you have it. I committed a cardinal sin, and I added two sets of clownfish to one tank. So hopefully the 180-gallon tank will be enough room to house them both, and they can both pairs can live happily on each side in their own territory. But the only way to find out if it works out is to please subscribe to my channel, and I'll be posting an update here in the future. Have a good day, and we'll see you next time.